Hello there, my fellow troubadours, and welcome back to another Warhammer 40k lore video. Previously, in our overall series on Eldar lore, I finally got around to start on a very famous and very mysterious faction. They are none other than the Harlequins, a group that is so unpredictable and so unknowable that not even the Dark Eldar want to mess with them. While last time we talked about who these guys actually were, today I wanted to go a bit deeper and talk about their organization and describe their so-called masks and troops. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Most of the Eldar live with the bitter knowledge that their gods are gone, either having abandoned them or been destroyed in the fall and the birth of Slanesh. Almost unique among their kind, the Harlequins do know that at least Kegorak has survived the fall, and even now plans the salvation of the entire Eldar race. Or maybe he's just trolling them. With every passing year, more and more Eldar are drawn towards the Harlequins, erasing their past identity and taking up the mask and motley of the Laughing God. A mask is both an army and a company of dramatic players. It has no big formal leader, instead being a collective of like-minded devotees of Kegorak. All of them know their duty through their familiarity with the traditional role of the characters they have adopted. No Harlequins rules their fellows for long, because they all possess an equal voice. A mask of Harlequins unleashed on a battlefield is a thing of fury and mind-boggling precision. The ultimate melding of cold alien wrath and preternatural agility. It is a spectacle of destruction as beautiful as it is murderous, as troops of warriors leap and bound into the enemy, slaughtering the foe even as the Skyweavers cut off the lines of retreat, herding the enemy into the waiting guns of the Void Weavers and the Death Jesters. A Harlequin mask possesses a synergy nigh on unmatched in any other fighting formation an instinctive bond grown between the Harlequins as they travel and perform together and unleashed on the battlefield in times of war and strife. The organization of a Harlequin mask will be, no doubt, unusual to the standards of a regular army, no matter the race. After all, it is formed from multiple bands of dancers, mimes and other dramatic performers. The organizational strictures of a mask hail out of the ancient days, when the devotees of Kegorak were, first and foremost, theatrical performers. Ever since the fall, a place has traditionally been reserved in the mask structure should a solitaire lend their considerable abilities to their cause. But outside of that they are unchanged, centered around three distinct troops. The light, the dark and the twilight. Each one of these contains a different cast of characters, grouped by outlook and symbolism. The light, for example, is associated with swift action, the heroic protagonist, the sky and the day. The dark represents villainous antagonists, violent endings and the night, while the twilight is somewhere in between, the fateful journey comprising characters bestriding multiple or shifting worlds. This structure ensures that each member is aware of their fellow's role upon the stage and the battlefield. The Harlequins of the Light Troops embody the heroic aspects of the Eldar, and typically they play heroes in their grand displays. They launch brave charges, fight with boldness and hurl themselves into the fray like heroes of ancient myth. The Dark Troops, on the other hand, appear sinister and vindictive in their actions, and the ways in which they finish their enemies are cruel, flamboyant and very, very violent. The Twilight Troops are definitely the strangest, their actions dictated apparently by some unknown reasoning. They can appear capricious or obsessive, their actions very difficult to read until the moment their genius is revealed. This mutual understanding allows Harlequin masks to fight with Nyan perfect efficiency. Without a need for orders, each warrior knows both his own and his comrade's duties, as well as knowing at all times who will require support and who will lend support. 
Indeed, despite the lack of a formal military chain of command, a mask is perfectly capable of acting with far greater synchronicity and discipline than many regular armies. In battle, a mask will seem less like a group of individuals and more of a single, perfectly coordinated entity. Further enhancing this incredible efficiency is the fact that each of the mask's mythic plays has its battlefield counterpart, known by the Eldar as the Seidaf or Saidaf. Essentially a strategic battle plan with an allegorical edge. These inform target priority, overall strategy, and whether the conflict should be led by the light, the dark, or the twilight. In some cases, masks specialize in a certain mythic cycle, and they will rely upon these to the exclusion of all else. In others, the ritual significance of the enemy, the significance of the battlefield, and even factors like day, night, or quality of lighting will inform the decision. Whatever the choice, each engagement is an intricate and brilliantly conceived strategy. While the Harlequin masks tend to follow a time-honored structure, established by the followers of Kegorach in ancient past, each one also has a distinct identity that reaches from their performances and onto the battlefield. For example, the Mask of the Leaping Stars go to war heralded by the same kaleidoscopic displays which accompany their performances, while the Mask of the Morning Mist advance in ghostly silence as ominous as the shadow of Inid out of Eldar legend. This adherence to tradition and connection to their ancient legend strengthens the masks in battle even more. Every tactic they implement is a counterpart to the Seidaf, a battlefield plan with an allegorical edge. These inform the mask tactics and which troops take the lead. Each Harlequin knows these Seidaf on such an intricate level that they can enact these strategies with flawless precision. Appended to the three troops are the Sky Weavers and the Void Weavers. A full mask will feature two squadrons of Sky Weaver jet bikes and one of Void Weavers. Masks also usually include at least one Shadow Seer and a Death Jester, and it is common for one of each to fight alongside each of the three troops and on rare occasions, a mask may also be joined by a solitaire. This final player is not bound to the mask and will only serve with it as long as his or her own agenda are aligned. Now, if these specialists like the Death Jesters and the Solitaire sound a bit confusing, worry not, as I will be making videos on each one in detail. The Harlequin players perform with breathtaking skill, whether their stage is a wraithbone and glass amphitheater bathed in crystal light, or the firelit hell of a battlefield. They tumble, they sprint and they leap, every squeeze of the trigger and slash of the blade bringing death to an enemy. No Eldar is actually born a Harlequin though, and all kinds of strange stories persist concerning how this metamorphosis occurs. Some are supposedly drawn from bustling crowds, beckoned into the shadows by a masked figure that only they can see. Others will simply vanish from their chambers out of a craft world, their precious spirit stones discarded in their wake. To become a Harlequin means erasing all that was before, be it friends, family, path or purpose. However that happens, once an Eldar becomes a Harlequin, every aspect of their identity is erased. Each one joins a light, twilight or dark troop and assumes a new role at the behest of the troop master. These roles, each known by a ritual character such as the Webway Witch, the Sun Prince, the Shimesh Poisoner, etc., can inform every aspect of the Harlequin's personality from that point onwards. The difference between these three troops to a non-Eldar observer would be very difficult to distinguish by visual cues alone. Outside of a rune badge that is either a prism, a heart or a four-sided star, there is very little to distinguish them from one another. The real difference though is how the players act. A peculiarity that sets apart the Harlequins from their Craftworld and Exodite kin is the strange fact that they don't use a spirit stone. Normally when an Eldar dies, their unprotected soul, by default, is taken by Slanesh and consumed unless it is preserved in one of those mysterious gems 
and joined either with the Craftworld Infinity Circuit or the Exodite World Spirit. But the Harlequins alone possess a secret which allows them to escape the grip of Slanesh, and it is not one that they share. To the other intelligent races, the Harlequin's appearance seems to defy any kind of squad identification or uniformity. And that is exactly how the warriors of the Laughing God will have it. Confusion is, after all, a tool of war. The icons that they do use to tell each other apart are largely standard across all the troops. With the light troops wearing a prism, the dark ones bearing a four-sided star, and the twilight a heart. Each troop, led by the Troop Master, bears the Master Rune, which is an ornate version of the same basic device worn by his troop, often hollowed out and bordered by curving arcs. All the players commonly display their troop rune upon a knee, a thigh, or a shoulder plate. Each player wears the colors of their mask, and honored players may also display their mask rune. Now, I'm not entirely sure if the next Eldar video is also gonna be on Harlequins, but I still wanted to make a poll on which Harlequins aspect you would like to see next. And on this one, it's just a binary choice. Option A, unique Harlequin masks, which put more simply are similar to tribes or guilds. Or option B is Harlequin specialists like Death Jesters, Solitaires, etc. To vote, just write your choice in the comments below. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Eldar Harlequins, their masks and troops, for today. Definitely a bizarre and colorful group, both literally and metaphorically, it seems. But what are your thoughts about the organization and traditions of these fellows? Are they among your favorite factions of the Eldar? What do you like or dislike most about them? Do share your thoughts in the comments below if you want. If you found the video informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. May the blessings of Isha be upon you.